Hi everyone, this is Professor Oaks, and in this video we are going to talk about higher order derivatives. So, these types of derivatives are, are used to find acceleration and other sort of items that I'll talk about in a, a moment. So, to find an object's instantaneous velocity, we differentiate its position function, and then to find an object's acceleration, we differentiate its velocity function. So if you have the position function, we call that S of t, the velocity is the first derivative, and then the acceleration is the derivative of the derivative, or we call that the second derivative. So that's one example of an of an acceleration of being a higher order derivative. So here's the notation. You can have y double prime, f double prime of x, and then d squared y dx squared, and then d squared dx squared f of x. So there are lots of different ways that you can write this notation. So just be clear on how the notation looks and the third derivative is here and then the fourth derivative notice that after the third derivative you just write the number of the derivative in a parentheses like fourth derivative fifth derivative etc so here is an example the velocity of an object in meters per second is v of t is 36 minus t squared when t is between 0 and 6 inclusive find the acceleration of the object when t is equal to 2 so the acceleration is a of t and that is the derivative of the velocity the first derivative of the velocity and so the velocity is 36 minus t squared so the derivative is negative 2t. And then when t is equal to 2, we have v prime of 2 is negative 2 times 2. That's negative 4. So, so that's negative 4 is the acceleration of this object. So now you can see some of the other derivatives are summarized here, right? So the uh, velocity acceleration is the second derivative, third derivative jerk, the fourth derivative, the jounce or snap, fifth derivative crackle, sixth derivative pop, seventh derivative lock and eighth derivative drop. All right, so there's lots of different uses for the higher order derivatives and you can read more about it here if you would like to. So now let's find all the higher order derivatives of each of the following polynomial functions. So we have f of x is 9 minus a half x. So the first derivative will be derivative of 9, 0. Derivative of negative a half x is negative a half. And then the second derivative will be, well, 0. And that means that we found all, all of the higher order derivatives because all of the rest of the derivatives will be 0. Let's try again f of x is 1 minus x squared. The first derivative will be derivative of 1, 0, derivative of negative x squared, negative 2x. Second derivative will be the derivative of negative 2x, which is negative 2. And third derivative will be the derivative of negative 2, which is 0. And that means we have now found all of these higher order derivatives since the rest of them will be 0. Let's try again. The, the derivatives of 
f of x equals x to the third plus x squared. So the first derivative will be 3x squared plus 2x. Second derivative will be 6x plus 2. Third derivative will be 6. And the fourth derivative, remember I'm going to write the 4 in the parentheses like this, will be 0. And that means we've now found all of the higher order derivatives since the rest of them will be 0. All right, so here is an example. Let f of x be 4 over the square root of x. Find the, this means the nth derivative for all values of n. So f of x will be 4x to the negative 1 half power. All right, so now we have the first derivative will be 4 times a negative a half x to the negative 3 halves power. And then let's see, the second derivative will be 4 times negative a half times negative 3 halves x to the negative 5 halves power. And the third derivative will be 4 times negative a half times negative 3 halves times negative 5 halves times negative, uh, oh, well, let's say just x to the negative 7 halves. And then the fourth derivative will be 4 times negative a half times negative 3 halves times negative 5 halves times negative 7 halves, times x to the negative 9 halves. And then we want the nth derivative. All right, the nth derivative. So this is n equals 1, first derivative, n equals 2, second derivative, n equals 3, third derivative, n equals 4, fourth derivative. Then look at the pattern here. We know this is going to be 4 times negative a half times negative three halves. And then I need to figure out how many of these to multiply by and then what power the x will be to. So negative something over two and negative something over two. All right, so let's look at this. If n is equal to one, we want this to be a one over two and the exponent to be a three over 2. So one way we could do that is to make this say 2n minus 1 because 2 times 1 minus 1 will be, well, 1. And then if n is 2, we get 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 3. And if n is 3, we have 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5, and if n is 4, we have 2 times 4 minus 1 is 7, so we see we have 1, 3, 5, 7, or 1, 3, 5, 7, all right, so this will be negative 2n minus 1, and then for the exponent, we need this to be a 3, 5, 7, 9, so here here we go, we have, let's say 2n plus one, two times one plus one will be three, two times two plus one will be uh, five, two times two plus three will be seven, and two times four plus, oops, sorry, one. <laughs> uh, two times three, plus one it will be seven. Two times four plus one will be nine. I, I was right that the other one was seven, but the two times three plus one is seven is what it should be. And so this is three, five, seven, nine, three, five, seven, nine. So this will be negative two n plus one over two in the exponent. So this will be the nth derivative 
here. I don't think that this type of problem would happen a lot, but if it does, now you get a sense of what would be asked of, of you, hopefully. Now, the next couple of pages are problems that you can try on your own. What a time to be alive. I hope that you enjoy trying those on your own. So let's look at, given the, the higher order derivatives, we're going to find some other ones. So given that the second derivative, f double prime of x is 2 minus 2 over x, find the third derivative, f triple prime of x. So another way to write the second derivative will be 2 minus 2x to the negative first power. So the third derivative will be derivative of 2, 0. So the derivative of negative 2x to the negative 1 will be 2x to the negative 2 power or 2 over x squared. All right, here we go. If the fourth derivative is 2x plus 1, find the sixth derivative. So the fifth derivative will be the derivative of 2x plus 1, which is 2, and the sixth derivative will be 0. All right, here's another one. Given h of t is t to the third plus 2e to the t, find the fourth derivative. Well, the first derivative is derivative of t to the third is 3t squared. The derivative of 2e to the t is 2e to the t. The second derivative, derivative of 3t squared is 6t. Derivative of 2e to the t is 2e to the t. Third derivative. The derivative of 6t is 6. Derivative of 2e to t is 2e to the t. Fourth derivative. The derivative of 6 is 0. The derivative of 2e to the t is 2e to the t. So this is 2e to the t. Let's try another one here. If we're given h of t of pi cosine of t, find the 86th derivative. So the first derivative is negative pi sine t. Second derivative is going to be negative pi cosine t. Third derivative will be, well, pi sine t. And then we see the fourth derivative, we're back to pi cosine t. The fifth derivative then will be negative pi sine of t. Then the uh, sixth derivative will be negative pi cosine of t. And the seventh derivative will be pi sine of t. So hopefully you can figure out then that there will be a pattern and if the, the n or the number of the derivative is divisible by 4, then the derivative will be pi cosine of t. So multiples of uh, 4 will have a derivative of pi cosine of t. So the closest multiple of 4 to 86 would be 84. So the 84th derivative will be pi cosine of t. 85th derivative will be negative pi sine of t. And the 86th derivative will be negative pi cosine of t. So hopefully that all made some sort of sense here that I'm looking for a pattern in the higher order derivatives. So given w of t is 3 halves e to t plus 2 cosine of t, find the fourth derivative of this function. All right, so the first derivative, derivative of 3 halves e to t, 3 halves e to t, Derivative of 2 cosine of t 
will be minus 2 sine t, then w double prime a t, 3 halves e to t, then minus 2 cosine t, third derivative, 3 halves e to the t, then plus 2 sine of t, and you could have probably guessed here that this trigonometric function was going to cycle back to itself at some point. So the fourth derivative is 3 halves e to t plus 2 cosine of t, then at pi over 4, the fourth derivative at pi over 4 is 3 halves e to the pi over 4 plus 2 cosine of pi over 4. So if you wanted to change this, let's see, a cosine of pi over 4 to root 2 over 2, you could. So the 2's divide out and it's 3 halves e to the pi over 2 plus root 2. All right, so now let's do some examples here involving implicit differentiation. So we have, let's see, x squared plus y squared equals 9. So the first derivative, d dx of x squared plus y squared equals 9. The derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x, and the derivative with respect to x of y squared is 2y dy dx, and the derivative of 9 with respect to x is 0. Now, let's solve for the derivative here. So we will go ahead and subtract the, the 2x, and then we will divide by 2y, so dy dx is negative 2x over 2y, or negative x over y. Now, I can find the second derivative. So, the second derivative with respect to x, we're going to use the quotient rule here. So the u will be the denominator, I'm sorry, the numerator, and the, the v will be the denominator. So du dx is negative 1, and dv dx is dy dx. So if I use the, the quotient rule, all right, remember, that is a v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. So we have y times negative 1 minus a negative x times dy dx all over, let's see, y squared. Then I'll substitute the dy dx in here which was negative x over y, so I have negative y plus x times negative x over y all over y squared, and I can uh, find a common denominator here in the numerator, which is y, so y over y, so I'm left with negative y Oh, uh, minus x squared over y over y squared, then multiply by the reciprocal here. So negative y minus x squared over y times 1 over y squared. So it's negative y minus x squared over y to the third power. So that is the derivative by implicit differentiation. Now, let's try to find the derivative with respect to x of y squared equals 10x. So the derivative of y squared with respect to x is 2y dy dx. 
and the derivative of 10x with respect to x is 10. So we'll divide by 2y to get 10 over 2y, or that will be, all right, 5 over y. Now, if we want the second derivative, now you could use the quotient rule again, but this is just 5y to the negative first power here. So the second derivative with respect to x will be negative 5y to the negative 2 power dy dx and dy dx was, here we go, it was 5y to the negative first power, so this will be negative 25y to the negative third power, negative 25 over y to the third. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed that problem right here. Now, let's find the first and second derivatives if we let f of x be the cube root of x plus 2. So you can write that as x plus 2 to the 1 third power. So the first derivative will be, well, I uh, use the power rule. So 1 third x plus 2 to the negative 2 thirds power. And then <clears throat> use the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of x plus 2, which is 1. And so that's just one third x plus two to the negative two thirds power. The second derivative will be one third times negative two thirds x plus two to the negative two thirds power. So this will be uh, negative two ninths. Oh, sorry, <laughs> did I say negative two thirds? power, I meant negative 5 thirds power. What a time to be alive. x plus 2, the, the negative 5 thirds power, and that is the second derivative there. All right, so now that is the end of this section of examples, but I do hope that you would try some of these example problems here just for your own enjoyment because one of these you can see has a 200th derivative in it and then a, a problem with the fourth derivative and the tenth derivative so i hope that you enjoy trying to do these problems and that you enjoyed this video and that you're already looking forward to the next one have a great day and what a time to be alive